So I'm here today with Chai, somebody I've met on social media who is a super Kratom advocate. I am so excited, Chai, to have you here. How are you? I'm doing good. It's been hectic this week because I'm moving out of this apartment, moving into a new apartment. I got a job at Terminal One Hospital as a registered nurse in the city, which is about two hours away from me with traffic. And so instead of doing the commute back and forth, especially with a 12 hour shift, I just thought, hey, why don't I just move to the city? So I found an apartment that's about 10 minutes away from the hospital. And I, yeah, I did an apartment tour. I picked what unit I wanted. I signed the lease. So it's official. That is awesome. Well, congrats to you. And I'm sure, I'm sure as we have this discussion, it'll probably be Kratom having a lot to do with uh, this part of your journey. So why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and just so we kind of know more of who you are yeah. before Kratom came into your life. Okay. So I go by Chai online, but my real name is Aisha. So I was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm the oldest of five kids and I just, I love healthcare. My dad, he has epilepsy and diabetes and he was hospitalized often. And so I had a lot of experiences just talking with the nurses and see how they treat my father. They're exceptional and it inspired me to be a registered nurse myself. I started out as a CNA, a certified nursing assistant. I did that for years. Then I went to nursing school as I worked and then finally, I graduated from nursing school and got my license, and I've just been working as a registered nurse. I had the opportunity to be a travel nurse, so I got to travel in various states in the country, and I just absolutely love nursing. In August of 2021, I was injured by a patient. I was working in psych emergency, and it was a psychotic patient. They broke my arm. They gave me hand nerve damage in my left hand and they injured my knee. So I was out of work for over a year. And so once I recovered, I went back to work. And not too soon after that, I got a traumatic brain injury. And so I've been out of work for a while, but I've recovered the neurosurgeon. He cleared me to go back to work. And so I applied to various places. And then the hospital, the trauma one hospital in the city, they hired me. That is so awesome. Congrats to you. Thank you. Now, my understanding, you have suffered with alcoholism, depression, yes. anxiety, even an eating disorder. So tell us a little bit about that and then how Kratom came into the picture. Okay. So I'll start out with my alcoholism. I was just a hardcore alcoholic. I would chug just bottles upon bottles of vodka and wine. I didn't measure. I didn't take shots. I just got the bottle and just would guzzle it all up. And that I I was just very unhealthy physically, mentally, and it just got so bad. I was hospitalized for it. There was this one night the ambulance had to come and rush me to the hospital. And it's just, I would lose relationships left and right. And despite the consequences, I would always go back to drinking just to numb the pain, numb the depression. I have severe depression and severe anxiety. And I had suicidal thoughts. I just, I hated waking up in the morning. I would cry often. And it's just, it could be sunny outside, but just in my heart, it was clouds, it was rain. And so I would just drink. I would drink it all up just to cover the trauma that I experienced in the past. and. It got to the point where I was in my bottom. I was in the lowest of my low, and I decided, let me just go to an AA meeting. I would go to AA meetings. I would still drink, but it got to the point where I was ready to be sober. But despite all of that, I kept relapsing. So it was just a vicious cycle. I would drink, then I would stop, and then I would drink again, and then I would stop. And so... It just Kratom has been essential in my recovery because I just remember I was my boyfriend needed to get something from a head shop. So I walked in the head shop with him and I saw all these signs of Kratom. I had no idea what it was, but I was just desperate for relief. And so I asked the the people who worked in the head shop, like, what is this Kratom? They told me a bit about it and they said, it'll help with your mood. It'll help with your anxiety. Just try it. So I got capsules and that's how I started with it. I tried the capsules. It wasn't that effective. I didn't understand the hype of Kratom, but I did my research online and went on Reddit and Discord, talked to some of the Kratom advocates, and they told me about small batch Kratom. 
So I gave that a shot. I looked up some vendors that people recommended. I tried various types of kratom strains and lo and behold, it's just, it changed my life around because I, you know, the cravings and the urges of alcohol is still there, but it's not as strong as it used to be. I was on naltroxone for six months, but just by being on that medication, you know, I would be on that medication, I would drink and then I would get sick. So I told myself, hey, well, let me skip some doses. That way I would be able to drink. But of course, being on Kratom, I stopped taking the naltroxone and it just helps so much. I've been sober for months since August 24th of last year. And that's amazing. That's the longest I've been sober in years and it feels great. And it's been helping with my severe depression, my severe anxiety. Now I look up, I look outside and it's sunny and I can feel sun. Like I can feel the light within my heart. I don't cry waking up. I don't just stay in bed and cover myself with my blanket and, you know, doing tasks, doing things that used to be extremely difficult. I can do it now. So I'm just very thankful and grateful for Kratom because I'm sober from alcohol and I just find a new purpose in life. I'm a lot happier and I'm not anxious. I'm prescribed high doses of anti-anxiety pharmaceutical medications. I'm on 800 milligrams of gabapentin four times a day and 45 milligrams of Fuspar a day. And that's on top of antidepressants, mood stabilizers, and antipsychotics. And my treatment team, my PCP, my psychiatrist, my therapist, they are all aware that I take Kratom. They just told me to watch out for negative side effects, but I've had nothing but good. So medication with Kratom, it's, it's like I can live again. That, that is absolutely amazing to hear your story and, and how this plant has helped you so much. So let's back up to when you first learned about it. You're yeah. in a head shop, also known as smoke shops, and you get introduced to it from there and, and you just like, okay, I'm going to buy some capsules and just yeah. try it. And you just tried it without much research or knowing anything. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That, like I you just, just ventured in. Yeah. I mean, I talked with the people in the head shop. They just, they gave me recommendations as far as like how many capsules to take. And I, I didn't know any better. I would take a whole bunch of capsules and I would get sick, but I would take a small amount of capsules and I would not, it's just, it, it, I, I didn't feel much of anything. And that's why I had, it was from then on, I did my research about Kratom and then I learned about small batch Kratom. Yeah. Cause you know, I, I, for me, it, I did a whole bunch of research before I started and come to find there's a lot of little things about it that it helps to understand before you just venture into it. It seems like people that just go for it because somebody mentioned it to them, usually they'll end up taking too much, which will make them puke. That's the version of ODing, like it's not going to kill you. It just makes you sick. Yeah. But it's interesting how this plant affects everybody differently. And one person may only need a very, very small amount for what they they're looking to get out of the plant versus someone who their body it needs more. So it's just so interesting how we're all different with this plant and learning as much as you can arming yourself with the information. It, I think is, is so important. So when you, so you first take it and you said you did the capsules and it didn't really help that much. D did you like, like, well, tell me a little bit more about your research. Like, okay, so you tried this, but you were still intrigued, I guess, and you wanted to like, you know, learn more about it. Do you remember like mm -hmm. what websites? I remember for me, American Kratom Association, I think was one of the first websites in Kratom Science Podcast. Do you remember like what yeah. places you first discovered to get information? Well, seeing as I'm in healthcare, I look for empirical research. And so I look for scientific articles and exper you know, just scientific articles of Kratom and just researches surrounding to it also i i just went on social media i went on reddit i went on discord i went on tiktok i went everywhere and i just watch you know creative advocates like botanical queens and joey talks and coach haynes and 
And it, it was just essential because they taught me responsible uses of Kratom, you know, responsible uses, not abuse. And so I, I was able to tell myself, you know, less is more. That's the thing with Kratom. Less is definitely more. And so I started with a small dose of the powder and I kind of gradually went up until I found my sweet spot. I did the same exact thing too. And and that was definitely the key to figuring it all out. So you mentioned small batch Kratom. Can you explain to the listeners? I don't know if everybody really knows. I, I, I've heard about it. I have an idea of what it is. But since you're more immersed in that world, can you kind of explain what that is? Well, I'm not the greatest at explaining stuff. But from what I gather, small batch Kratom, it, it's just Kratom, like online Kratom vendors. They're not like bulk a bulk company where they just have like a bulk amount of Kratom and they distribute it. It's, it's more personable. And so they, they really look for quality instead of quantity. And so they, you know, they look for the best farm, the best like suppliers, farmers, what have you. And they just call like, they just cultivate it and make it. It's just the quality is just so different and so much better than what you could get in a head shop or what you can get from a just a bulk like a, a company that sells kratom in bulk yeah it seems like it's just more personal attention and service being that they're small you're probably actually talking to the person that started the business mm -hmm. uh, yeah i think that's really cool because i've seen those pop up and uh yeah because you got some of the really big companies where like you couldn't really talk to yeah talking to a customer service rep and and you know it feels very different when you're doing I've with tried companies. just getting in contact with bigger companies it's so hard I would email I would try calling because I would have questions but with small batch vendors I would email I would text I would call and they would pick up the phone they would respond back and it's just, it's a lot more personable. And some of these small batch vendors, when you do order stuff from them and you get the package, sometimes they have like handwritten notes. Oh, that's And so I love cool. that. Yeah, it's so cool when you really get that personal attention. You know, I've met some of the vendors that I'm currently consuming just through social media, especially through TikTok. And uh, I really like Jordan from New Hope Botanicals. And so personable, such great customer service. I had I had ordered some kratom from them a while back, and I had made a YouTube um, a TikTok video about you know how much I was I was really liking their kratom, and then I go order some, and he thought I ordered the wrong one. Like he actually emailed me and said, hey, because he saw me make a video about one of them, but I ended up buying the other one because the other one I bought like two different ones from them and. I'll usually buy like the smallest amount, try it, see, you know, which one helps my pain the most before I buy it in bulk. And I thought it was amazing that he took the time to email and was like, did, did we send you the right one? Did you order the right? I just want to make sure we got it right. I was like, wow, like who takes the time to do that? And I, th yes. I think that says a lot about a business where they're so personable, you can easily reach them and have a conversation with them and feel like, there is you're more than just dollar signs to them mm -hmm. exactly now you discover kratom is helping you immensely so how how do you feel like it's impacting your day-to-day -day? i mean you touched on it a little bit but mm -hmm. I, i'd love to hear more of just like how is helping you day-to-day -day yeah one of the biggest things it's been helping me with, so I have an eating disorder. I have anorexia, and it's a battle that I've fought for over a decade. When I was younger, I was overweight. I would get bullied in school. I would have negative comments from family, and I just felt really down and not confident in myself. My self-esteem was really low, and I, you know, the world was telling me that I'm ugly, and so inside my heart, I felt that I was ugly, and so I lost weight. And I started getting these comments, really good comments. For the first time, I felt pretty. And even my family made comments like, you look good. And I'm like, thank you. And so I just kept losing the weight and kept losing and losing it. And then it just gradually became an obsession, just restricting the food, not eating. And if I feel like I ate a lot, which in reality, I probably had a small portion, I would purge. 
it got to a point where those positive comments became negative again. I looked very sickly and people would wonder if I had an illness and I would tell them, no, I'm fine. And I, I was so severely underweight. I was hospitalized for it once. And so this past last year, I was again, severely underweight and I was at risk for hospitalization again. And this is where Kratom helps me. It eliminated this obsession, this obsessive thoughts of restricting. Before I would dread eating, I would try to hide how small I am eating or I'm not eating at all. I didn't like eating around people. And with Kratom, I can enjoy eating again. I I look forward to meals. I can be sociable around food with people. And I since I've started Kratom, I've gained almost 20 pounds. Wow. So, It's been helping me so much. I just want to go to people who have, you know, my fellow people with eating disorders and just tell them about Kratom because it's saving my life in so many ways. It's saving me with my alcoholism because I don't know if I would still be alive right now if I didn't have Kratom. It's saving me with my severe depression and severe anxiety. You know, back then I had suicidal thoughts. I just wanted to end my life. And it's also helping me with my eating disorder. I've gained weight. I can enjoy eating. I'm not so obsessed with food. And I can just live life again. Before it was extremely difficult just to function. And now I can be me. I can be the Aisha that I always was, like the Aisha that I wanted to be. And I'm just immensely grateful for this plant. It's a mir- miraculous plant. It just turned my life around. That that is just so amazing to hear because, you know, you're you're not using kratom just for one thing, like just for alcoholism yeah. or just for the depression or anxiety. You take this plant and it helps you with all of these medical issues. That is amazing. And you were saying earlier you were taking all these different medications. So were you able to like cut out all or most of those medications just because you're consuming kratom? A little bit. Before I used to be on just high doses of medications, again, antidepressants, mood stabilizers, antipsychotic, anti-anxiety medications, and I don't have to take as much. So some of my medications, the doses have decreased. I am still on medications, but just medication alone wasn't enough. I was still severely depressed and anxious and with the eating disorder and the alcoholism, it just, just medication alone was not helping. But with Kratom, it just, it, it just, it brings a light to my heart. Like it just brought a light to my life. Yeah. And you were saying earlier that your doctors are on board with it. And, yep. and that is awesome to hear because it seems that Plenty of people I've talked to say they don't mention it to their doctors Mm because they're just afraid to. Some have said they've mentioned it and the doctor gets mad at them and makes them stop. And then I've been lucky enough, like you, where my doctors are, are fine with it. I've yet to meet a doctor or nurse or anybody in the medical community that already knew what it was when I bring Mm -hmm. it up. Were any of these helping you uh, already knew about it or are they all learning about Kratom from you? My psychiatrist, my PCP, they were familiar with Kratom. My therapist was not, but she did do her research about it. And she just told me to watch out for it. And since I work in healthcare, I know the importance of being honest with your treatment team. So I was completely honest with my doctors and my psychiatrist, my, you know, with my PCP and my therapist, I'm just completely honest with it because I want them to help me thoroughly. And in order for them to do so, they need to know what I'm taking. Yeah. And I think that's so smart. And I think for any of our listeners that are in this journey as well, that are afraid, and I get it. Like I I was really afraid to mention it to doctors in the beginning. I'm coming up on my five-year anniversary of Kratom, been taking it every day, multiple times a day for my chronic pain, have had no side effects, no issues. And my primary care physician is totally on board with it. She doesn't know much. She's learning about it from me, but she wasn't already aware of Kratom. And the thing is, I see her twice a year. We do labs every time. And I think that's actually important. I think if anybody you know is consuming Kratom uh, instead of 
in place of going to the doctor for whatever ailments or whatever things. I think it's still important to get checked out from time to time, once a year, some, whatever you're comfortable with and get labs just to make sure it's not affecting your liver, not affecting your kidneys. I, I've had no issues. My labs always come out really great. And it's a peace of mind, but yes. I, I feel like I'm starting to educate the, the doctors and nurses because they're, they're, you know, they're not, they weren't aware of it, but I think mm-hmm. us as advocates making them aware, I think is so important. Yeah. And it's just important to have, you know, people that are helping you medically to have an open mind. If you're with a doctor and they're, you just, you find they're not a good fit, find another doctor. You know, if you have a therapist and you find out you're not a good fit with that therapist, just if you're able to find another therapist. Yeah, for for sure. So Tell me about your current Kratom routine. Is this something you have like a regular schedule or just mm-hmm. more of an as needed? Tell us a little bit about how you do that. So I take Kratom about three to four times a day. I wake up in the morning and I start just, I have Kratom, you know, before I would just start my morning with coffee, but with energetic strains or blends, it is my coffee. It just gives me that boost. And prior to Kratom, I would always be tired. I would just be chronically tired all the time. And, you know, with Kratom now I have energy. And so I would take an energetic strain or blend in the mornings and same with the afternoons when the evening comes, I like to wind down, wind down and de-stress. And so I would take a much slower strain just to help me just fall, like to help me sleep, to help me fall asleep. Awesome. And so like, what kind of strains do you have like a preference? You know, there's white, green, Mm -hmm. red, yellow. There's like, there's so much to learn with this. Do you have like a certain routine? Like I know a lot of people like to start with the white strain in the morning and maybe Mm -hmm. switch to a red in the evening. I know you're really big with making videos talking about Kratom. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems like some of these videos I've seen you do, like you, you, you're, you're always switching it up and stuff, which I find so yeah. interesting. So tell us a little bit about that. Okay. So in the mornings, I like to take whites. I, I love white strains and blends. So that's, I just start my mornings with that throughout the afternoon. I would have fast greens or daytime reds. And when the evening comes, I'll just have a red, just a strong, slow red. And so all the strains work well on you? Like, like you don't notice like, oh, this particular, like for me personally, greens are the only ones that work on me. Like Mm -hmm. I've been doing this a long time. I've experimented with multiple vendors, different kinds of reds, different kinds of whites and different kinds of greens. And the whites make me too jittery. So I, I just, I can't take that one. And the reds, do not help my pain at all. Mm -hmm. And the whole reason why I take it is for my pain. And it doesn't make me tired or sleepy. I know some people like the reds for nighttime. Uh, It's just greens, greens, super greens are the best for me. So that's what I've learned on my journey. But Mm -hmm. it sounds like all the different strains work for you. Yeah, not every Kratom strain is effective. If I try a Kratom from a vendor, and it doesn't work, I, I give them another chance, I'll try a different strain. And most of the time, I'm very impressed. I'll just try like a red Bali and, or I'll try red Borneo from a vendor and it's just not effective, but then I'll try a different red and it is. So, you know, when I first started Kratom, it was a bit overwhelming with all the color strains. And so I would hear the, you know, people say whites are for energy, greens are the kind of the in-between, reds are for pain and just help with sleep. And so I would just play around. I would just experiment. It got to the point where I just have my routine. I just know what works for me. So like whites in the mornings and then during the day, I would have fast greens or daytime reds and the evenings I'll have reds. So it sounds like, and, and from what you're saying and from the videos I've seen you put out, cause you're a big advocate for Kratom is that you're just like taking something different every time. Like yeah. you are just rotating. I'm a big fan of rotating. I do that too, but I just have a couple of vendors that I rotate. Whereas it seems like whenever I see your videos, it's like you're doing something completely different today than what you did the day before. And the day before it's like, it's, I find it interesting. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I love switching it up. When I first started on Kratom, people would tell me, you know, in for your tolerance, it's important just to switch it up, not to have the same Kratom all the time. And so, you know, I just like just learning about these different Kratom vendors and trying their Kratom. 
And I think it's fun. Just every single day, take something new. I have my regulars. I have like my go-to kratom. So if I'm feeling really down and depressed and anxious, I know to go to this particular kratom. If I have this particular problem, go to that type of kratom. So I have my regulars. I have my go-tos, my absolute favorites kratom that I go to all the time. But then I like to switch it up with different strains and blends as well. So How are I like you, change. Yeah, I love it. How are you finding these vendors? Because I watching your videos, I'm like, well, I've never heard of this one before. Like, it's just, I know there's a lot of, of vendors and especially the small batch vendors. So how do you discover them? I discover them from social media. Sometimes the vendors themselves, they're active on Discord and I would talk to them and they would give me recommendations of strains that they sell. And so I would give them a shot. So I would look on Reddit, I'll look on Discord, I'll just look online and just see the different Kratom vendors that are out there. And those the ones that people highly recommend, I try them out. And even some not well-known Kratom vendors, I would also give them a chance because they're a small business and you know they're saving our lives. They are all part of our recovery. And so I want to do what I can to support these Kratom vendors. And that's why I make videos. That's why I advocate online because it's been such a huge asset to my life. And I just want to be able to help people because I look up to people like you who advocated online and I just watch your videos and every, you know, it's just, it's just so educational, so interesting. And I want to be able to do the same. So I just talk about different Kratom vendors, strains that they sell, what is effective for me, what is not effective for me. And I don't, it's just, it's fun. I, I love advocating because again, it's saving my life. It's saving other people's life. And we can save much more people's life just continuing to advocate for this plant. I think advocating is so important. And that's definitely what I want to talk about next. So perfect segue into this. Yay. I think as Kratom consumers, for any of us that consume this plant, I feel it's important that all of us should take the time to help advocate. I know not everybody can do it loud and proud like you and I do, but at minimum, staying on top of the legal issues because there have been a lot of that going on here in the U.S. And it, you need to be aware and know if there's some legal issue that pops up in your own state. So you can go talk to your representatives. Or sometimes we hear about other states, like we know in Louisiana, they've been like banning it in certain parishes and it just yeah. comes out of the blue. They get misinformation and all of a sudden they ban it in this one little part of the state. And a lot of people don't, that are consuming Kratom don't even realize it's going on. I think it's so important for any of our listeners that consume Kratom to join the American Kratom Association. You can join it for free. You do not have to donate. Get on their mailing list. I did that right when I started taking Kratom in 2019. I didn't have a schedule that allowed me to be a loud and proud advocate like I am today and make videos and spend a lot of time online. But I made sure that I stayed on top of all the legal issues so that I could email representatives, share my story, which only takes a moment to do. And I think it's just so important. But you're like me. You're a loud and proud advocate. We're on social media just telling the world, screaming from the rooftops like, hey, there's a yeah. plant that is helping me tremendously and Maybe, I mean, we're not sitting here pushing on anybody. We're not telling anybody what to do. We're just trying to say, hey, for me personally, hey, this plant has worked far better for my chronic pain than all those nine years of taking opioids every day. Not to knock the opioids. I mean, I'm glad I had access when I had access. But there came a time where the doctors got scared and they just won't prescribe it anymore. And I got put into that situation, which nobody should go through. But sadly, it still goes on today, five years later. But thank God I discovered Kratom because not only has it been able to fill that gap from doing the opioids, but it works better for me. It works it does. far better. Yeah. I and have chronic pain. Because of the because of a patient attacking me in August of 2021, you know, with them breaking my arm and giving me left hand nerve damage and they injured my knee, you know, I have chronic pain from that. And so what I realized with Kratom is that, hey, I get to walk without limping now, you know, I, I can use my hands for a long amount of time without my wrist feeling just just throbbing with pain. And it's just, again, it's a miraculous plant. It's just helping me in so many ways, including pain. 
I think you're probably the first person I've, I've met where this plant is helping you with so many different yes. things because I, you know, I totally forgot like, yeah, of course you have chronic pain. You, you've been injured and, and you, but it's like, but you got, you know, it's helping the alcoholism, it's helping the depression, it's helping the anxiety, it's helping the eating disorder, and it's helping your chronic pain. It's absolutely amazing. You know, it's been referred to this plant as like a pharmacy because of all the alkaloids. And it blows me away. So I love that you're a huge advocate. So tell us a little bit about like how you kind of ventured into being this loud and proud advocate. <laughs> how did that get started? Well, before I wasn't, I was loud and proud, but I was shy. Like I would not make videos. I started out writing reviews of Kratom that I've tried. And then I started watching TikTok videos, YouTube videos. I would watch your videos, Madeline. And it just inspired me to the point where I'm like, if they can do it, I can too. And I just remember I was so anxious when I made my first video and I was able to do it without restarting. And I was like, wow, this is not as bad as I thought it was. It was just like talking to a friend, you know, because the Kratom community, we're family, you know, we all have something in common. And so when I do make these videos, it's like I'm talking to friends. And so it just gets easier every time. Th that's how I feel too. I mean, I, I'm older than you. You're definitely young. I've been like doing uh, digital marketing, social media, all this stuff for a long time, speaking at events, doing videos. So it's very easy for me to do just because I've done it for so long. But in the beginning, it wasn't easy. Like it, it, it definitely takes time. But I feel the same way as you. I just get on my phone and make these videos like I'm talking to a friend and just sharing my personal experience in hopes that it helps other people that are viewing it. And I'm finding that it is helping a lot of a lot of people. It's interesting how TikTok people are looking for this kind of information, and that mm -hmm. we're reaching people there. Although I know you've been banned multiple yes. times on TikTok, oh. it's it's crazy how kratom is such a sensitive topic on social media platforms. Twitter, we're fine. Twitter, we don't get into trouble. We can actually spell Kratom the normal way. But on the other platforms, you have to spell it differently so that you don't get flagged through the algorithm. And uh, there's just a lot of haters. And and like I've had I had my first TikTok account banned uh, back in December. It was heartbreaking because like you said, we put all this effort into this, yes. making these videos, and it takes time to do. And it's so frustrating where all of a sudden you're, you wake up one day and your account's gone yeah. and you have to start at zero all over again. Out of nowhere. And you've yeah. done it multiple times, which I'm so proud of you because it is very defeating to have it just canceled, deleted, taken yeah. away from you through really no fault of your own. I've seen your videos. You're not sitting here making medical claims. You're not pressuring people to buy. You're not even like really promoting it like you're selling it. You are just, hey, this thing is helping me. I'm trying this one today, this brand, this type, and it's really good. That's all you're mm -hmm. doing. Like that just makes no sense that you, yeah. your account would get banned multiple times from doing that. All I do is just talk about Kratom. I remember my first account on TikTok was banned, just permanently deleted out of nowhere. And so I didn't want to give up. So I made a second account and they would start removing my videos and give me strikes. And eventually that second account was deleted as well. And so I made a third one because I'm like, girl, I am not going to give up TikTok. And again, I was permanently banned. And so now I made my fourth account, but I'm not uploading videos. I'm just using that TikTok account to follow advocates like yourself. I am uploading videos on YouTube. Seems like YouTube for now has been treating me right. They have not been removing any of my videos. They haven't banned my channel. And so oh, I say channel, but my boyfriend always makes fun of the way that I say that word because he's, I think it's channel, cha Channel, channel channel okay yeah. yeah so yeah it's been treating me right so far so i've just been uploading videos on youtube and then on reddit and discord i just continue to post written reviews of the different kratoms that i've tried so i am not giving up because you know with you your first account was banned but you didn't let that 
I Stop immediately it. made a new account that same day. I was getting ready to upload a video and I was like, where in my account? I didn't even get any strikes or warning. There was no warning. It was gone. And it's terrible that these platforms, I mean, look, we're using their sites for free. I mean, you know, they can do whatever they want. It's just sad that they can just sit here and shut you down for speaking your own personal truth. When you go on social and see people talking about things that are way worse, showing things that are way worse, that it's like, how is this allowed on social media? So yeah. it, it is it's frustrating, it's defeating. But I, yeah, I'm on my second account. So far, so good. But I, I just know every single day that could change, you know, and it's not going to stop me. I, I'm never going to stop advocating. I know you're not going to either. Many of us advocates are, you know, we'll find another way because our message is that important to us. So I'm glad you're u utilizing YouTube. I do know of people that have had issues with YouTube. So hopefully, mm -hmm. you know, you won't run into that and, you know, hope. Because video, I think, is such a powerful way to get the message out. And you, you're doing really well. I really like how you're making your videos. Just very personable. And, and people like that. You know, it doesn't need to be fancy. It doesn't need to be polished. You don't have to have fancy equipment. It's mm -hmm. just speaking your truth, sharing some info. Uh, you never know who is going to help. So last thing I wanted to talk about with you, you've been taking Kratom for a while now. Not a super long time, not years and years like some of us, but I mean, I I remember five months into my journey, somebody in a Facebook group asked me, like, you know, wanted to know more about Kratom and what have I learned since I started taking it. And I remember writing up a huge whole thing about it because like I had just in this short period of time, I learned a lot of do's and don'ts, a lot of trial and error. I figured stuff out. So I felt like, wow, you know, I, looking back, I it's amazing all these things I picked up. So I always like to ask our guests, like knowing what you know now about Kratom, what advice would you give to yourself for when you were first starting out? Yeah. I say, don't feel like you have to jump in blind. Do your research. Talk to Kratom advocates online. Watch Kratom videos on YouTube or TikTok or just wherever. And don't be afraid to ask questions. Just don't because it, it, it's, it's better to ask. It's better to ask and give the answers. And don't give up. If one Kratom strain doesn't work for you, try another one. You know, if you try a strain from a vendor and it doesn't work, try another strain. Just don't give up and start slow and try titrate up until you find your sweet spot. Don't feel like, you know, with me being an alcoholic, you know, it's like the more you drink, the better. And it's not like with Kratom because the more you have it, the more it ends up being a negative. You know, for me, I get sick. I get nauseous and I'm basically just asleep the whole day. And so I learned not like more isn't always better. The, the term in the Kratom community is less is more. And that is true. And if you find Kratom works for you, don't be afraid to advocate for it. You know, if you feel like you can't make videos, that's fine. You can adv advocate for it virtually just by being active on social media. Tell your friends about it. Tell people outside and just let's advocate for Kratom and make it legal everywhere. Because again, like I said, it's saving my life. It's saving your life. It's saving others. And we could just save much more people lives just by telling them about it. I didn't know about Kratom at all until I just walked into a head shop and saw just the signs that says Kratom. And so if it works for you, be loud and proud and be you. I, I, what a great way to end this discussion. That Those are just words of wisdom from your experience. I love it. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. I really enjoyed hearing your story. Thank you. Thank you, Madeline. And thank you so much again for what you do. Just you work hard and it's not easy. You are passionate about what you do and it shows, you know, you taught me so many things and you taught others as well. There's a reason why we love you, Madeline. So just keep <laughs> doing you. what you're doing. Appreciate that so much.